Hey everybody, if you get hungry and you start feeling irritable and you get emotional ups and downs and you get jittery when you get hungry, that is not true hunger. The first description of the difference between true and false hunger was given by Dr. Joel Furman uh, in several of his books where he discusses that when you're eating a nutrient-dense diet, you are essentially capable of switching from this sort of irritability and the ups and downs and the really uncomfortable sensations of hunger, which are not true hunger, and shifting them to what's called true hunger, which is where you sort of get a, a sensation in your mouth or the back of your throat that you sort of need to eat something. This is also achieved by what I have uh, described in several of the webinars I've done recently, which is basically called metabolic flexibility. Now, what that means is, is that your body can switch from burning sugar to burning fat, in other words, switching into fat burning mode quickly. When your body is not capable of doing that, it, you can almost think about it as not being metabolically fit. Not, you, in other words, the ability of your body to process macronutrients like protein, carbs, and fat, especially carbs and fat, is not, you're not fit. You're almost not, it's almost like not able to lift a weight in a sense. Because what's happening is, is if your body is deprived of sugar or carbohydrates, and it's not capable of switching into burning fat mode. Your blood sugar can drop, you can get jittery, and all, and all that whole host of things where you know you have a headache and you just feel desperate to, to get something sweet. When that happens to you, you have to realize your body is not in an optimal state. It's, it's in a sense sick because ancient man was capable of switching from burning sugar to burning fat. If they went without food, then their body was essentially trained, because they went without food, their body was essentially trained to be able to switch from burning sugar to burning fat. That's why some kind of fasting is, is helpful, because if you're doing some sort of fasting um, protocol, and there are many that I've discussed in other videos, then your bot, you're training your body. It's like you're bringing your body to the gym, in a sense, training it to be able to switch from burning sugar to burning fat. But there's another way of doing it as well, and that is just to start eating really cleanly, avoiding processed foods that make your blood sugar go up and go down. Because if your blood sugar is constantly doing this, no matter what you do, you know your body is not going to become metabolically fit. If you eat a lot of nutrient-dense foods, just like, uh, actually, like Dr. Joel Furman, who described this dynamic between uh, false hunger and true hunger, when you're eating a lot of nutrient-dense foods, then your blood sugar is not going all over the place, and your body becomes actually a lot more metabolically fit. It's able to handle food and lack of food in a much more efficient way. So the first step for you is to get rid of all processed foods that make your blood sugar go up. That can be fine milled grains, even whole grains that are grilled excuse me, into a very, very fine flour. When they hit your bloodstream, and when they hit your stomach, they go right into your bloodstream and your blood sugar goes up, and that can result in all kinds of those sorts of side effects, including emotional issues when it goes up and down. So you get rid of processed carbohydrates, all sort of processed foods, anything, most chips and these sorts of things are going to have that sort of effect. And once you start getting control of your blood sugar, then you start to have some, some improvement. But of course, follow some of the fasting protocols I've discussed in the past. Start eating a lot more greens and being conscious of what, you're in, what food you're eating that's going to make your blood sugar go up. Uh, I've spoken about that in other, other videos, but if you have any questions, please leave them below. This was something that occurred to me, this sort of connection between true and false hunger and metabolic flexibility. And um, I was explaining it to someone else and figured maybe you would find it valuable as well. So definitely leave your comments below so that, um, or questions, so that uh, we can have a, a communication. Thanks.